Welcome back to the 2015 National Signing Day Show here in the football training facility. I'm Robert Giovanetti, joined by Texas Tech head baseball coach Tim Tadlock. Coach, thank you for joining us. This you morning. bet, Gio. Glad. Should be fun. It should be fun. We've got about got you for about eight minutes, so we'll try to squeeze all we can out of you for the next eight minutes. Okay. All right. So ready to go. You had a. You uh, obviously need to fill a lot of air time if you <laughs> we, have me on here. We're here three hours. Right. We're here okay. three hours. Baseball season opens next week. You guys ready? No, we need some. We need about a week. I mean, we've uh, we've gotten our at bats and we've you know seen some pitches and some pitchers have been on the mound, but we feel like they all need to get on the mound again and at least one more time and. Uh, at this point, you're never ready. I mean, you, you always, in baseball, you're never there, so. You got the Dons uh, of San Francisco. We see the graphic there. So next yeah. Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th at, at 2 o'clock. Are you a superstitious guy at all? Uh, my grandma always says bad luck to be superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I want to, we, we, we've got to talk to you a little bit about this upcoming season, but are you, do you pay much attention to fan expectations? Because you find it interesting that, I mean, you have built now some tremendous expectations here, which I guess is good and bad. Oh, I think we pay attention to it. I mean, you, it's, uh, I mean, I read a, quite a bit of newspapers in the mm -hmm. morning, you know, really trying to just uh, get the day going and all that, and we pay attention to it. At the same time, we try to keep our guys uh, level-headed and, and understand there's a respect for the game there and understand it's a hard game to go play and that uh, – whether we went to Omaha or not, guy's going to show up, try to play the game the right way, and going to try to try to beat you. Well, we do know that there's a sign out there, right there, just talking about it on the outfield fence that does show you did go to Omaha, and uh, hopefully many more trips in the future for this uh, Red Raider uh, program. You see the uh, practice footage right now in some cold weather. You guys have had, it's really the weather's been been better for you the last couple of weeks, but you saw Coach Hayward, and, and obviously, a strength of you guys going down the wire last year was that pitching staff. Yeah, Coach Haver did a great job with those guys late last year. And, uh, really, that's the ultimate goal, to put your, put your pitching staff in position to pitch at their best in postseason, try to take care of their arms up to that point, and try to get guys performing at a high level uh, when the games, you know, when postseason gets there so it gives you a chance to make a run. And uh, Our guys stepped up last year and really threw the ball really well. And, uh, the neat thing is, is, I mean, all those guys really just got to go out. They don't have to be any better. They don't have to do anything special. Just go out and be themselves and uh, stay within themselves and throw the ball to the plate. You know, we're seeing a lot of guys here on the highlights that you've got coming back. Guys that played meaningful games for you down the stretch. Gutierrez, Nesloni, uh, a lot of those guys, there's one that's not coming back, Devin Conley. But a lot of these guys, you can rely on their experience to, to lead this group. I think so. I mean, we've got some guys that definitely played a lot of college baseball games, and you kind of go around the horn. I mean, there's one, Stephen Smith played an awful lot of games. Uh, Eric Gutierrez, Tim Proudfoot, Bryant Burleson, uh, Tyler Nesloni, all those guys have played a lot of college baseball. And then on the pitching staff, Corey Taylor, Dominic Marino, Cameron Smith. Uh, and then really anybody that's been through it, we play a lot of games. Right. So by the time you get, you know, game 25, game 30, guys kind of have an idea what they, they should, should have an idea of what they need to do to be successful. And uh, there's always adjustments to be made in, in, uh, in all sports. And we try to help them with making those adjustments and uh, try to put them in a position to succeed. Are you guys in, in any spots do you feel at this point set or do you say, hey, everything right now, we're trying to see who's, who performs the best in practice, and we'll go from there? We, we really, uh, we, we're set. I mean, we're set at short. We're set at first. Right. Uh, we're getting close to being set in center with Stephen Smith. And uh, there's been guys that have been consistent since we've been here in September. And we definitely know there's six or seven guys that we want to have in the lineup every day. Now, if they don't perform in the next couple of weeks, you have to make a, you have to, you have to figure out why they didn't perform. Are they hitting balls hard at people? Are they having good at bats? Uh, baseball's kind of a game of failure when you start talking about hitting. And so you really got to look at it from a con context of can they help you win baseball games? And uh, So we'll, we'll go with six or seven guys and, and uh, some other guys will compete for those other two, two or three spots. Hey, a guy a lot of people want to know about because we're here at the football training facility. Pat Mahomes, how is he working out and, and where do you see his role being for this team? Well, he's, uh, it's, uh, he's a breath of fresh air on a baseball field. He's, uh, he's been on the mound two times against hitters and throwing the ball probably not near as good as he wants to throw the ball, 
Uh, the neat thing is we saw him early in the recruiting process as a baseball player mm -hmm. uh, before he really was ever a quarterback. I mean, this, you're talking about as a ninth and 10th grader playing on a really good summer baseball team. And uh, he actually played with Tanner Gardner as a ninth or 10th grader and uh, didn't really know what he was going to be. He didn't know if he was going to be a pitcher or an outfielder, an infielder, but you could see there's so much athletic ability there. Uh, and what I'm getting at is, is the first time he picks a bat up since his high school season, uh, I was doubting myself for a minute. I'm going, okay, he's not really squaring anything up, but and everything looks like it's moving a little fast for him. And he takes BP the next day and it gets a little better, takes another day, it gets a little better. And very similar to the football analogy we saw in the, in the fall, you put him in a game, and he rolls out three hits the first day. And he hadn't seen live pitching since last spring. And uh, and so, and then yesterday, I want to say he throws a guy out from right field. We all know he can complete a pass, right? Here he goes. Long pass. <laughs> right? long, great well, he long completed ball, yes. one yesterday like Roberto Clemente from right field. I yeah. mean, literally, a guy's running from third, and guy tries to tag, and uh, he throws it in the air from – not shallow right field. It's not a ball that guys get thrown out on and completes it to the catcher. Guys out by everybody in the room here would have called the guy out. Mm -hmm. So he's really a breath of fresh air. Uh, our coaching staff knew that uh, I want to say in his first inner squad, uh, they were like, yeah, we knew you were going to hit him lead off the next day. And we hit him lead off to get him some at bats. But the first day he inner squads, he gets on second base and if you're not familiar what sandlot means on a baseball field, it means taking a base when, not really when you're supposed to take the base. It means like when everybody drops their head and they're not paying attention. He does that to some guys that have played a lot of college baseball games the first time he ever gets on second base. Catcher lobs it back to the pitcher, and everybody goes, whoa, he's going to third. <laughs> and, and he's sliding and he's safe. And you're like, you know, that's really a breath of fresh air to see a guy just competing and mm -hmm. and trying to – he's trying to earn playing time. And, and, and so it's funny because you're saying a lot of these things that I guess in my mind I had him just, pick, you know, pictured him as a pitcher. But clearly there's a lot of things he can do. Well, we saw him in a – I mean, again, we saw him very early on in the baseball process. And uh, I would think – the, co the football coaching staff and Coach Kingsbury would tell you that he was a baseball player early on in his, his high school days as a ninth and 10th grader. And I want to say when Cliff was still down in College Station uh, was when Patrick came on the scene as a quarterback and he threw for how many yards as a junior. At that point, baseball people thought he was going to be a good baseball player. We just didn't know what, what it was going to be. And I'm still not sure we know what it's going to be. Uh, but we'll continue to give him that bass, continue to give him the innings. And, uh, I mean, really, Coach Kingsbury was the, you know, the ace in the hole in that deal. When he came on board, uh, Patrick had shown us some interest, but he hadn't really, like, been out here yet. And all of a sudden, we hire Cliff. Coach, you know, obviously, Kirby gets Cliff done. And, and all of a sudden, Patrick's really interested in coming out to Lubbock and had been out here a few times. And it's an exciting time. And, uh, it should be exciting watching him play. It's going to be a challenge for our staff to get him at bats, to get him on the mound here early. Uh, but at the same time, uh, keeps getting two or three hits a day. It won't be that big a challenge. <laughs> All of a sudden, it becomes a lot easier yeah. uh, to find a spot. For sure. Real quick before we let you go, season tickets through the roof. Hard to get season tickets now, harder every day. Uh, you got to love the, the fan support and what people have kind of got behind this program. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you've seen the highlight video Scott made and the guy that was working for ESPN last year in the Super Regional, I mean, he, you know, he pretty much said, hey, I don't know what people are talking about. This is a football atmosphere in a baseball stadium. It, it absolutely was. Uh, and that Super Regional, we're really excited about the, you know, the opportunity and the possibility of that happening on a weekly basis at Rip Griffin Park. And uh, we, we really appreciate the support of our fans and appreciate people coming out. And uh, it's an exciting time and uh, we got work to do on the field. And uh, but at the same time, we'll do that and try to try to respect the game, do the best we can. First pitch Friday the 13th versus San Francisco, two o'clock. Get out to the ballpark. Coach, thanks for joining us this okay. morning. You bet. Appreciate right. it, Gio. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be back for more here on the 2015 National Signing Day Show on Texas Tech TV.